Cigarclub.com, the first ever intelligent cigar subscription. Also, an official sponsor for Ron Real TV. YouTube, what's going on, baby? It's your boy Ron Real, aka Double R, back in the building, back with another video, back with another damn banger, man. Today, we're going to be taking a step back in time. We've already reviewed the 2020 year of the rap by Drew Estate. We're going to take it back to almost four years ago, October of 2016. So, October of 2020 will make this cigar four years old. We're going to be looking at the year of the rat, the first year of the rat Drew Estate did. So, you guys hang tight, stay tuned, we're going to get at it. All right, so we're back with the second installment of the all new Drew Estate series. The first video you guys know I reviewed the 2020 version of the Year of the Rat. Today we're gonna be looking at the 2016 Year of the Rat. This was the first Year of the Rat that Drew Estate did. So I'm really excited to be able to smoke this one back to back and compare it to the 2020 version. So got a lot of other cigars in store for you guys. Really excited about this series. So we're gonna jump straight into it. These cigars actually are the same size. This is a five and a half by 46 ring gauge. This one again isn't as toothy as the 2020 version is, but it has nice, tight, visible seams. Uh, some tooth to it, but not a whole lot. Got some veins present, but it's nice and pressed down. Very nice looking cigar. Has the classic uh, Drew Estate fan tail that we'll see on quite a few cigars. I'm actually looking at the Liga 10th, 10th anniversary here. It has a bigger version of it, but the fan tails have been quite synonymous with Drew Estate cigars. Nice foot band on it that reads 20th anniversary Florida Panthers. Stanley Cup final. So uh, it's got a nice little cap on it. So I go ahead and take the foot band off, cut it up and uh, smoke it and we'll see what we got as far as comparing notes. MSRP for this cigar when it came out was $14. It's gonna be really hard to find this cigar now, but I imagine if you find it, it's gonna be a lot more expensive than $14. People are gonna probably charge you a premium for it, but hey, some it's some hardcore Drew Estate fans out there that are probably looking for them. So, by all means, man, if you want to pay more than that, uh, that's cool. I also want to give a huge shout out to some recent, or not recent subscribers, but just some day ones or some people that are really supportive of me, some brothers of the leaf, sisters of the leaf. I want to give a huge shout out to Janae, my sister of the leaf, Janae, Terry, uh, Miss Prudence, Latonya. Then I want to give a shout out to a couple of my brothers, Austin Dyer, Matt Newman, uh, Thomas Smith, Team Bacon Spice Man. Really a uh, big shout out to you guys for Really being supportive, really always involved in my live streams, comment, being engaged, and so I really wanna give a, a huge shout out to you guys, man. Thank you, there's a, quite a few other you guys too, but just wanted to give a shout out for those right now. But uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and cut this up. I'm gonna go ahead and try to use the pigtail or the fantail instead of cutting it. I'm gonna see if I can pull this off. If not, I'll just cut it, so. Let's see. Don't know how this is gonna work, man. It's pretty stiff. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Fan tail broke off. All right, I tried. I tried to be cool for a second. It usually works a lot better in Cuban cigars. Their Cuban fan tails work a lot better than the New World ones, but doesn't hurt to try. Good draw. Getting like some fig, raisin kind of flavor on it. See what we got. Can kind of taste that clean earth in the background of it too. We'll see how age is done this. Some people think that some gar some some cigars can over age, which they can, but I feel like some cigars actually do better with age. You guys see the patented Drew Estate foot smoke? This one's smoking as, as usual. Not as hard as the 2020 was, but still a lot of foot smoke. Good black pepper, probably about an eight, eight and a half. Very good black coffee base on this, very, very good. 
faint chocolate in that background. Yeah, I would say very intense black pepper, good black coffee base, very good dark chocolate. So we'll let this thing get heated up. I'll come back in this first third so y'all hang tight. All right, so we're working our way through this first third. Construction, burn, draw, all of that has been perfect. Not super razor sharp burn line, but nothing I'm gonna have to correct at all. Flavors are really good, still getting about the same. The black pepper has died down some. Still picking up on, like I said, the black pepper's died down. That, that dark chocolate is there, but it's, it's falling back a little bit more now. You got a little bit of a cocoa note that's coming in. Still getting a nice black coffee and a little bit of wood. Kind of for me, seems like it's pretty typical to the Unico series. This is falling in line with it. Really nice, intense flavors. I can't be mad at that. I'm really surprised that it's, this is another example of this cigar is almost four years old. Body and flavor is still good. I'm gonna say body and flavor both are at medium to full right now and strength is probably at a medium. No nicotine hit or anything right now. This is complete flavor and a lot of body, which I'm a really big fan of too. So I'm gonna keep on smoking through this thing. Let you know if we got any changes. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned. We'll be back or we'll be right back. All right, so we're working our way through this second, third. Still a lot of good flavors. The cocoa note and you know, that, that's died down some. Now I'm gonna say most of the cigar is dominated by a, a oak wood and a dark bitter chocolate. The cho the bitter chocolate's not a bad note, but that's that's taking over now. The cocoa note's kinda gone. The black pepper's still there, but very much in the background. Flavors are still good, but the intensity has died off quite a bit. So that'll definitely affect the, the flavor points as far as I'm concerned. Still a really enjoyable cigar. If I wasn't reviewing the cigar, this still is very enjoyable, but a, a very noticeable drop off from the first third to this back side of this second third. Lost a little bit of complexity too, but um, it's still very reminiscent for, of most Unico cigars like the Ratzilla, Velvet Rat, UF-13, L-40, Feral Flying Pig, Dirty Rat, like they all have that same uh, taste profile to me. It's just how concentrated it is with the size of the Tolas. I think I forgot to even mention it. That's crazy. I, but uh, so the wrapper on this one, the same, this is the same breakup as the 2020 year of the red. Connecticut Broadleaf Binder, Brazilian, or Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, Brazilian binder, and it has fillers from Honduras and Nicaragua. So same, same exact build as this year's year of the red. I don't know if I would even say so much that the, the age has caused the drop off. It just, sometimes I think even newer cigars, it'll just happen. That intensity will be up front and then it'll just die off some. So I'm not even really gonna blame the cigar being, it's just three and a half years old. So I don't think, even though I do think uh, Ligas and Unicos can kind of die off in flavor over the years, but it's still an enjoyable cigar. So I'm not gonna part, I'm not gonna really just fully blame it on how old the cigar is. Still good, it's just become the wood and the dark bitter chocolate has been the main flavors and the peppers kind of in the background now, but still really enjoyable. If you like that dark flavor profile, it's still gonna be a, a really enjoyable cigar for you. And, uh, so yeah, that's all I got to report on. Construction still been spot on. No touch-ups, no relights or anything like that. So we'll get to this last third, give you guys some points so y'all hang, uh, hang tight and we'll be back. All right, so getting through this last third, but I'm pretty comfortable with scoring it. Still still about the same, still getting controlled by a lot of oak wood and that bitter, bitter chocolate is still dominant there. Still enjoyable, no complaints at all. Forgot to mention in the update in the second third, body and flavor to me are still in that medium to full range. Strength is still, I would say a healthy medium, maybe a low side of medium to full, probably for the uh, smoker that's not experienced with more full body, more full strength cigars, it'll be medium to full full. But for me, I feel like this is still probably a healthy medium. So no complaints at all, still really enjoyable cigars. So we'll go ahead and jump into the numbers. So for flavor, I gave it a 17 out of 20. Still really good flavors, just really dropped off severely, severely after that first third. Still enjoyable, nothing, nothing like that first third. Draw was a 20 out of 20. Burn was a 20 out of 20, no problems with the construction, but Drew Estate's always known for having pretty good construction, which so I'm not surprised. Complexity, I gave a 16 out of 20, and the strength I gave a 16 out of 20, which is gonna give this an overall score of an 89 out of 100. Really comfortable with that. I'm glad I got to smoke it back to back with the 2020. I do feel like if I had a choice between the two, I would grab the 2020 right now. Still the same thing with this. Um, you know, if you could find, a, if you ever found a full box of 2016's Year of the Rats, I would say grab them just because it's a rare cigar and you're not gonna really come across them. But if it was something that was readily available, that would be a cigar I would just grab a couple of, maybe two or three or something like that and I'd be comfortable with that. But still, no complaints at all. So um, yeah, man, we'll uh, finish up smoking this thing and 
jump into this next one, which should be the Liga 10th anniversary. I'm really excited about that cigar. That came out last year in 2019, I believe. So um, we'll continue on with that Drew Estate series. So with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in to this second part of this Drew Estate series. I'm having a lot of fun with this already. So you already know what the name of the game is, relaxation and enjoyment. And don't forget to be driven, never motivated. We're gonna catch y'all on this next one.